Welcome to the Gate 7 International Podcast, your official English source for all things Olympiakos FC and Greek football. The first day of training is when I realized, oh, this is why they win the league every year. When I, I spoke with Kevin, if I'm going to sign or no for Olympiakos, he said, you're a pretty good deal, like my friend. I can't speak, you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Gate 7 International Podcast. I'm here with Martial Olympiakos France, my good friend, <laughs> my buddy. We've seen it all. We started the season together in uh, Greece, in Piraeus, and then in Lefkada. We enjoyed good memory. <laughs> We're back again here for this review of the match with Karabag of Azerbaijan. Um, Marcial, welcome. How are you this evening? Not good. Well, nah, I'm still on my cold I had last Sunday, if people remember. It was, very, diffi it was very difficult for me to be on, on the pod after the game in Crete, but I somehow made it, so I'm still He's like there. Huang in bone playing through his <clears throat> strained calf every day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was not at 100%, but I'm still there because Supporting. I think it was one of the few nights uh, in which I'm kind of not happy, but maybe optimistic, I would say, yeah. after what we saw tonight. Yeah. So Bakambu, I had to be there. the best striker in, in the league, clearly. I think it, it's a draw that could be useful for the future because with Endoy playing in defense, this is the kind of game that will be useful anyway. Like it's not a draw you get with the best yeah. uh, lineup you could you could have seen. So it's too it bad. Launch this guy Doy's career. I thought he had a very good game. Like it could be, like I remember Retos launched his career with Paolo Bento in Europe that season, you know. Yeah, yeah, and also it's nice because Mitchell, when he, when he came, he said, I'm not afraid to play uh, academy players. He said uh, it again I, tonight. Yeah, he said it. and yeah. he's doing what we were expecting from Martins, but probably much more from uh, Corberan because he came with, uh, you know, the, 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 the thing that he was a young coach, Spanish coach, Spanish coach and stuff like that. So we were we were expecting him to play B team players, and he probably was waiting for a better moment to use them because you don't throw players like that. But Mitchell' mm. main quality, if I can say that, is is willing to take risks. And yeah. when you Olympiacos, you you have to take risks because we saw that Endoy, well, he has all the abilities to play even in Europe. I mean, Karabag is not a, a super uh, super team in Europe. So, if you don't risk on, in those games, you won't risk uh, to put Endoy against Freiburg or against better teams. Yeah. No, I I think you're right. Um, I thought it was in, in the game in Crete. The first 45 minutes were really bad, and then again tonight, the first 15 minutes, 20, 30 minutes almost were really bad from Olympiakos. Like uh, the formation, I thought kind of was bringing a long pressure and then the front three was pretty ineffective tonight. Um, I thought Abu Bakar Kamara had like a very bad first half, but maybe then he got up to speed. He got a bit better, but I still don't think he's that amazing of a player. And then Weijo, um, I I don't know how many more opportunities he's going to get. I don't know how many games has he played for Olympiacos now. I'm going to look. But he's not scored yet. I want to look real quick. How many games has he played? <clears throat> we all know he's this played something player. like six games, I think. We all know so. he's not going to make it past January. Yeah, seven. I'm he's afraid. played seven games for Olympiacos, and he's still not scored a goal. Like this is a record that's hard to come back from. That's quite bad. Yeah, yeah, and also about the the system we saw tonight. <clears throat> Sorry, I think it was much more of like 11 players on the pitch rather than a system because I, I don't really saw a system playing. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was, it, it would be a 3-4-3 three, 
uh, 5-2 or 5-3-2, it depends. But I, I don't recall seeing like uh, Vrusai getting into a situation, an offensive situation, and also Oleg, man. He has one situation with the cross. I think it was right before the first, uh, the, 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 the mid, yeah. um, the half time, sorry. Yeah. But a part of that, I, I don't recall any opportunity that the system would have created tonight. Like the, five, to the, the formation to me looks like 5-2-1-2, two, um. two, but there's no width in the team because I think Versailles is very bad footballer. I don't think he's very good. Um, I think, should I say it? I think like he needs to leave. Honestly, he's, he's how many chances does this guy get? Like Pedro Martins literally bent him off. And he's brought back alive because we have no right back once again. Sime Versalco got injured again tonight, so he's probably done for another month. So maybe we need Frusai, but to me, it's just a player that offers nothing. Like you watch the player and you're like, what do you do? It's Maybe that's a bit I, I, harsh on him, but yeah. Well... I, I can't blame Vrusai because I remember before he got injured, I think it was one year ago under under Martins, he was starting to be to be very like quite interesting. In Marseille, got, you were there. He was quite good in Marseille. Uh, so. Yeah, he, he was probably the best player on the pitch. And I remember he got injured on his knee against Aris, if I remember. And then yeah. it, it kind of got lost and it's hard for a winger to uh it's hard for a wing girl like this in Olympiacos to success. So he probably he probably needed to to leave one year ago, uh, not this summer, but last summer, because he still had uh, a value on the market. But no, I don't see anything in Brusai that could make him a starter for Olympiacos. And he, I'm starting to think that Andrutos yeah. would be a better option as right back right now. That's that's a, that's a take. Andrutos fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, yeah. on Twitter when the lineup was posted, I posted mm. a old lineup. I don't know if you saw this, <laughs> a lineup from 2016-27 mm. uh, Cup match with pa, or with Ike, and Thanas Santrutsos was starting in the midfield next to Alexi Romao back then. I was like, then you, it's yeah. too bad we 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 wasted this player because it was a. <laughs> A good midfielder, but uh, yeah, he's, but finished. The, he's finished. The right back situation is going to be a very big problem because who's going to play on Sunday, which is a very important game? Versailles is going to play. Versailles is going to yeah. play. On... What about Lala? Is he going Lala. to be on the bench at least? At... No, no we, dude, we need someone finished. on the bench. <laughs> Lala's like out in, I don't know, the French club of Glifada, like he's with the French diaspora hanging out on weekends because he has nothing else to do i don't know what even what do you think he does on the weekends he like hangs out by himself with his family just you know yeah it's it's terrible because i think it's the only like the only it, it, it went quite un unnoticed to me that versalico ended up being injured tonight like the yeah, kind they of didn't injury mention it on the broadcast, they were like, "Oh, Versalco is off to the side," and it was like, "Okay, he never came back on." Inbom was finishing the game at right back, and you're like, "What the fuck happened to Versalco?" He, uh, yeah, Socrates yeah, did that thing where it's like the hamstring tore. You know, he was like, "It tore," yeah, because... and you're like, "Oh shit!" And then, but then the announcer was just like, "Moving on." It's like, "What do you mean moving on?" He's fucking tore his hamstring or something. What's wrong here? No, it's. <sighs> It's a disaster, and of course, Gonzalo Avia Gordon, aka Pipa, is also <laughs> out. So, Olympiacos has problems <clears throat> at right back right now. But overall, I, I still Phil is commenting here quite a bit, and he's he's saying, "I hate to be the pessimist, but I'm not seeing where the optimism is coming from tonight." For me, that was a worse performance than last week. The only difference is we didn't make the individual errors. <clears throat> To be honest, the the first half last week, first sixty minutes last week, were pretty good. Like Olympiacos played football, but tonight I think was literally just getting a result. If that was it, honestly, and also another thing, Phil was 
it was leaked through the propaganda channels that Olympiacos was saving energy for the match this weekend with Pauk. We wanted to win the big derby and Michel gets us going in the league. So <coughs> supposedly we've been holding some of our heavy guns like Gian and Via, who also got hurt at the end of the game. Yeah, I'm not sure what his situation is. The, the comment you showed is interesting because I yeah. think the end of the, the comment says it all. Like we we didn't make the individual errors, and I think Mitch the the task Mitchell had when he came was to to, to solve one problem uh, at a time. Like he just can't solve every problems uh, that that. He faced when he came because the, the the team was badly prepared by by Martins or his staff, maybe because the the amount of injury you see on this team is like it's just not possible. And also, we were conceding too many goals, especially late goals. And I think I I'm, I wouldn't say I'm optimistic, but I'm yeah. less pessimistic. It it makes a difference because. Being able not to consider goal for this Olympiacos, it's something good. It's just the beginning of something. I I hope that will be good, but mentally, it's a big block. It's like the yeah. first clean sheet the team has kept in a long time. I want to say. Yeah, and yeah. after having won in uh, Ofi while being one nil down, I think it's just an extra step. And the yeah. the, the the final step of this. Needs to be a victory on Sunday, otherwise it yeah, doesn't matter. Team, yeah, I say if we don't beat Pauk, yeah. it's all for nothing because it's kind of like, or the game's on Monday. Actually, surprisingly, I just looked on what? Monday. Oh, yeah. Um, it's all for nothing. You know, we need to, like, it was clear that players were benched, players were blah 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 moved to the side for the game with Pauk. So we put all our cards in the basket. We need to win the game. With Pauk yeah. and yeah. yeah, yeah, I will say all... though, Doi and Socrates showed power, showed strength, confidence, which you haven't seen in defenders at Olympiacos. It seemed in a while, like also Socrates, the leadership. Um, you saw him yelling and he gave a chest bump to Versalco. Maybe that's what injured him because he was injured like 30 seconds later, <laughs> but they were yelling, they were fighting, you know, like. Fuck's sake, like we haven't seen that in so long. You know, some players showing some fight, showing some anger. Um, yeah, and I, also I just want to say something on this because uh, the way the club handles the center backs pairs uh, is just very chambolic to me. Like it's just very difficult to understand because Socrates, when he came, He came, he came to be like the number one of the defense. And when he came, I think he was very decent when he came. Like he brought uh, another level of, of, of football. And we had to force Cissé to leave the club. Like he went on alone in France. And Cissé came back. And the, the season after that, he was the best player for Olympiacos. And Socrates somehow like went from the first choice to be the third choice. And even even sometimes the, the fourth choice because uh, CC and Ba were working like quite good together and like we didn't have any uh, rankings of the center backs like a really clear ranking like is Ba the number one is CC the number one is Socrates the number one like yeah and Socrates now. It But looks Manu like last too. Manu last yeah, Manu last. Like, he, he had to leave because yeah, he wasn't because happy he was a, with the situation. Yeah, yeah, because he was like a massive embarrassment too. Like <laughs> Jesus Christ, the guy. It like looked like it took all of his energy in the world to lift up right or his left foot, like to walk. It looked like it was like he was walking in quicksand whenever he would move. He was so slow. It was incredible. Yeah. And also, uh, I just saw a comment that I also yeah. find interesting, uh, saying that Michel uh, is extremely naive for dropping Socrates. But I say, I would say, I kind of agree with, with the end. But this is why I did, I didn't understand why Corberan uh, in the first game is not. He didn't field the most uh, experienced players the, the team had at that time, like. Because he, he probably knew the team was in a terrible situation, so it it just needed to 
at least get one point out of this game, and you don't you don't get one point uh, playing ball or uh, playing. Uh, I don't recall the lineup, but De La played, Fuente, like randomly. And, no, but, he played with a three three center backs defense. Like it was kind of experimentation, and you don't need to do that. And Valbuena, for example, people the people knows uh, how much I love Valbuena, but yeah. just look. The first, like the first situation he had when he came in, he, he got the ball in the midfield. He, he, he passed by the, the defender and he won a fall. Like he's 38 years old, yeah. but he has more energy than anyone else. And in, in Europe, when you are Olympiacos and when you struggle to look like a team, you need players like this. Otherwise, yeah. it's just not happening. He brings almost like a calmness, Valbuena. Like he can. He takes the ball, he takes a touch, he can pass it or he can get past someone. He knows mm. how to get in circles to draw a foul and slow. Like a lot of the problems for Olympiacos today, I think, was in the hold-up play with Abu Bakar Kamara, Ouijo, but also to Pepiel. I thought Pepiel was not cycling the ball around very well. <laughs> and that was a big problem. Olympiacos couldn't hold the ball. Like it would go back to Pascal Lakis and he'd boot the ball up. Ouijo would lose a duel and here we go again. Valbuena like was able to hold the ball. Olympiacos was able to get possession. I also think in the second half the system changed to like a four four two almost. Did you notice that as well? It, I, uh, to be honest, it was hard for me to say which which was the, which what like, which was the system after because all. Biel the... went further forward. I noticed that he he pushed Biel further forward when he took off Wejo. I. Uh... Yeah, honestly, no, Michel is not a tactical genius. Like, let's just be no, he's, real here. He's, like, he's not, but it, it doesn't have to. It doesn't, he have, doesn't to have to be. To be like the announcer Corbeiran kept saying, was brought to be like a tactical yeah. genius, and it it just it does not massively. work. It does not work because I, I'm pretty sure uh, the, the the squad has it uh, right now. It doesn't. Re it, the squad doesn't really want to like make a full tactical revolution. Yeah. Uh, like uh, modern tactic uh, of someone that worked with Bielsa supposedly like you you you, do, you can't make that for a squad with with yeah. players like M M Villa uh, Valbuena stuff like that they won't change the way they play and Mitchell probably will know how to activate those players and the only it's a, things that it's almost arise like Paolo Ancelotti from Wish or something it's just like <laughs> yeah yeah you have the players just like figure out a basic system because yeah, let's exactly. be honest, like the players of Olympiacos are so much talent for their talented than Karabag, like bigger careers, bigger ever. Like that sounds ridiculous, but it's the fucking truth guys. Like, I, yeah, I don't know what to say. Like Socrates Papasathopoulos is bigger than Karabag as a football club, like has a bigger career. Like <clears throat> that's me to Karabag. Yes. But they're an Azerbaijani team. Like, the... Yeah, it's it's the first time like I I knew Zubir because he played in France and I knew he was a good player and he turned out to be the the best player of Karabakh but <clears throat> I don't recall many teams uh, against uh, Olympiacos that I didn't knew a lot of players on this team like every player that came in it was uh, a complete stranger to me because this is not a very famous team they don't have any top players compared to, for example, Maccabi Haifa, which is a very good team to me. And we saw, we seeing that this season because yeah. they won against Juventus, but Karabag, yeah. I think it's just a matter of, of confidence. They got but confidence. Also fitness, like, because our team is yeah. like fucking dead. Like, yeah, I don't know, should I be the one confidence. to say it? Like freaking Marcelo, is he a professional footballer still? Yeah. And also, do, yeah. Do I need to the, say it? Another comment I agree with is because we we as Olympiacos fan I think we focused on Buchalakis. It doesn't it doesn't it just can't play anymore and stuff like that. But the the, the real issue is Buchalakis when he's pairing with Kunde, it it just not working. And also I'm starting to say, uh, I'm starting to think that probably Martins was right about Pierre Kunde. Like is. He became, he became a starter in the summer and we were like hyped at the beginning because we were all pissed by the situation he was before. But Martins. 
yeah, but just be honest, like, is he, he has, does he have the level to be an Olympiaco starter? Like, uh, Kunde sucks positionally. Like, he press it, he doesn't understand on the pitch. Like, he will make runs, he'll press, and he'll get, ex he'll expose mm -hmm. the rest of the team. I don't know if you notice how often he does this. Like, he'll, he has the physical dynamics and strength, <laughs> and he'll press or he'll overextend, but then he'll leave a gap in his position. And when he's in a midfield of two, it's a disaster because Buhalax is the only person behind. A lot of people going into Buhalakis, back passes, blah, blah, blah. But the positional awareness of Buhalakis and the defensive positioning and stability he brought to the midfield was key. Because when you have a midfield of fucking Kunde, who literally runs like a chicken who has no head, he's running here, he's running there. It's great that he can run, but the, he has a beautiful shot on him. He's strong, whatever. But the guy needs to know when to keep his positional awareness, stay in position because the back line gets exposed. And Bukhalakis, for as shit as he is, whatever he is, he has a good left foot. He can play the ball fast. This sounds insane because I I don't love Bukhalakis as a player either a lot of times, but like Olympiakos needs a little bit of stability. Bukhalakis can play a ball. He can hold possession, right? Olympiakos needs to cycle the ball, needs to get the ball. Tonight, we struggled to keep the ball because, okay, the forwards sucked and your wing play was Oleg Rabchuk, who can't dribble a football, and Versailles, who's a finished player. So you're looking at a situation where there's no one who can hold the ball at all. Bukhalex was like the only person, and he has positional awareness. So Bukhalex is shit on constantly by fans of the club. And Marcial, me and you were in the stadium. Sometimes yeah. we do it too. Like there's frustrating parts to the player, but there is n there's a reason last week with Karabag, the moment Marcelo came on and the moment who came on, I forget, and Bukhalax came off, the whole game fell to shambles. It's The positioning on the pitch is so important. And all, other than Jan and Villa, our other midfielders don't have it. Huang and Bum is fantastic. He's a creative player. But defensive positioning, winning the ball, I don't think is his strength sitting in front of the back three, the back two, whatever it is. So anyway, and before we go on, everyone, I need to to say this. Um, if you are a gambler, if you like betting on games, please do visit our sponsor, betus.com.pa, and get yourself a 125% boost on first-time betting. That means if I drop 100 euros into betus.com.pa, I get 125 euros as well to bet on Olympiacos, basketball, football, Europa League, American sports, everything. Everything you want. And also, we have an... Yes, uh, no, Marcial, no. I have one more sponsor to do, and then I'll let you go. But Or do you want to go now? No, 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 no. Keep going. Keep okay, going. one more sponsor. They keep coming. Oldie but Goldie. Make sure you ship with Pireos International. Let's go. This is an old time. Perez International is your one-stop spot for, uh, what's it called, for shipping and cargo and everything. Let's say you live somewhere and you need to ship something to the United States or Greece or wherever, <clears throat> Belgium. Let's say you had to leave Belgium because you need a visa. You can ship your things <laughs> somewhere with Perez International. Um, guys, feel free to drop our sponsor, Perez International, a call or a text if you guys need to. Uh, needs to what's it called? Uh, yeah, ship things. And also going back to the sponsor thing, you get two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Let's say you put a hundred dollars, you get two hundred twenty-five, not one hundred twenty-five. Math was never my strong point. Finally, <laughs> if you like what you hear, like and subscribe. What a disaster! What a fraud! That was a terrible ad read, but it's over, and I did it. I'm the goat. That's no, it. and. Okay. The, the 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 things you 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 said about Bukharakis, I think, is very interesting because uh, we 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 all get frustrated when he's on the pitch, uh, but when he's taken out, like you, you just you, you you can't see the difference, as you said, and even tonight you can see that the end of the game there there were more there was more pressure from Karabakh, for example, and I think it's. It's a matter of positioning because as limited as Buhalak is, is, I think is in terms of tactics, is kind of a, 
smart player, or I would say some, some, someone that has uh, high standards in terms of tactics when you take uh, the, when you compare him to the rest of the squad. And I'm not speaking about Mbila, of course, but I, I was in the game in Nantes uh, and from the stands, for example, you could see that Kunde. The, the, the things that annoys me is that sometimes he, he keeps running it keeps running without any purpose. Like it just runs straight, and you know it's gonna lose the ball. That it's gonna, uh, it's gonna lose the ball anyway. And it, it reminds me sometimes, uh, 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 like Timikas at the very beginning. Uh, Timikas on his left side, he was just running, running, running. And sometimes you would have to, would have to tell him like, just stop running, be smarter, just know how to run, when to run. And Kunde. He lacks like this kind of basic things that would make him uh, a midfielder that could play for him, Jack Piacos in Europe. I'm not saying he's, uh, he's about players, but I think we should have let him go uh, this summer and like just find another profile that would suit more the, the way we play football because there's no way Kunde will work out in Olympiacos. I'm afraid to say that. It, or at least it could be... It, it could it could be a good player at the World Cup, for example, if Cameroon uh, uh, knows how to win those games. But I'm, I'm not really see, I don't think it will last long in Olympiacos. No, I agree. I I don't see what the point is of Kunde. To be honest with you, like I really just don't see much of a player there. I. I I, I just don't see see the point. Like what 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 indeed is. Like, he's a body in the midfield, yes. But honestly, you see Doi tonight, and you think, honestly, there should be... Like, you see what Doi, Doi did tonight, and you think to yourself, okay, surely, like, an academy kid can produce yeah. some... Doi wasn't even considered one of the big stars in Olympiacos Academy, blah, blah, blah. And he's walked right. into the team and performed as well at center back as we've had a center back performance all year. Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of these kids must be able to play in Greece now playing in Europe. Like the, the lies we've been sold that like these players aren't ready and they're too young is like such bullshit. It's like Doi is 18 or 19 years old. Like that is normal abroad for a player to be playing. And it's a good thing that he's playing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree with surely you. Surely Dabo, in my opinion, Dabo should be yeah. called up as well if he's healthy. Like because Kunde, in my opinion, it's just like, is it, it, just someone that is stealing, if I can say that, the spot from some from a young a young player from the academy. This is the is it, it is it's just another problem, like the another example of the the, the issue we have in terms of uh, like uh, planification uh, of the squad because Kunde, like. You can he's like replace Thiago him. Silva, he's like Kafu, he's like... Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's like these players, like, fuck's sake, like, what is the point of these players? Like, Exactly, this is exactly that. Kunde just needs to be binned off and we bring in someone young, like, that. that's it. That, that's my yeah. opinion, at least. And, and yeah. Bukhalakis, blah, 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 like, we can cry for years about Bukhalakis, blah, 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 but... Jan, Jan and Via, like behind Jan and Via, he's the only person who can play on the six. Um, yeah. and, and also, is... I we have news. Um, Marcia, I know you saw it just now, but Jan and Via has severe pain in one of in his ankle. I mentioned he was lipping at the end of the game. It's going to be tests back in Greece tomorrow, but he doesn't look good for, for the Pauk game. He's hurt. So that's something that is not ideal to be hearing. The goat. No. I love I love Jan. No, I, right I, I I don't know what to say about that, but the this, the number six issue is something that should have been like uh, taken care of with Samaseku, and I wonder like. Oh, why... I completely forgot about this guy. Oh, right, yeah. How is that possible that a player is like that? That a player like that, which is a very good player in my opinion, he's not even on the the squad list. Like he has, to, <laughs> he he was on the squad list just because Vesalico got injured. I think 
sometimes I, I, <laughs> what can you say i'm lost for words i'm lost for words sometimes. sama seko do you remember when he came on who were we playing he came on yeah. who were we playing? Sama and he seko. was like a disaster for like five minutes <laughs> he had like a disaster appearance like sama seko is a very very good player i mean it what he went to germany but it did not work out for the for him but it's, it's still a good player. I wonder why this, this, every player that we bring to Olympiacos needs like one month to be ready. It's to, no, why, why <laughs> it's that? Like, why yeah, that? I know it's like it's like blah blah blah. It's not ready. It's like what the fuck do they do? Like I swear to God, like why does it take everyone a month to be ready? It's like Kasami is not ready. Like, what the fuck has oh, yeah, Kasami been doing all summer? Like, Jesus Christ. Or Marcelo is not ready. It took Marcelo like two months to get fit. Like, I, I, and I he's still not we, fit. We... And it's like, what does this guy do all summer? Like, he left Real Madrid, went for parade, like, went for party. Like, what the hell? Like, it happens to all of them, though. It's like, fuck's sake. I'm trying to think. Dorian Leidner comes. He's not ready, but he plays for the Israeli national team. It's like, what the fuck? What? Like, only at Olympiacos do players get signed and then they're like, oh, we need to delay their debut because they're not ready. It's like, what? It's like, yeah, and yeah, and yeah, I, I, just, I just know, I just don't know what to say, but I think it's time for us to, to, to speak about something. <laughs> I, 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 I was going to speak about that because the only, the only thing that makes one of the things that makes me optimistic uh not for europe but for the season is that i think we we got a massive uh the, the best transfer we, we we've made this summer is probably bakambu because yeah. we all love el arabi uh i'm pretty sure it will keep score some few goals in the greek league against lower teams but this game in Karabakh with Bakambu is prob would probably be a win tonight because yeah. the 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 difference in in terms of level uh, uh, from Bakambu to Wijo is like day and day and night, just not yeah. the same, not the same job. And I'm Bakambu's worried. Bakambu is almost like a, a higher version of El Arabi when he came to Olympiacos. Yeah, exactly. Like he has the same profile. Like he did very well in Spain and then he went to China, was amazing, had a poor run in Marseille. But like, okay, yeah. this player knows how to score goals. If you can score like almost two goals a match in China, you s destroy Greece or you score what was it, a goal every other game in Spain? Like you destroy the Greek league. And Bakambu, a lot of people complain he's missed a lot of chances when he's playing. Like the positioning is so good. Just give him like two months, and this guy is going to be the best player in Greece by far. It's yeah, and for also, me, it's a walk. Like there's no comparison. And I, I also, when you see Wijo like that, like it, it, as I said uh, to you guys on 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 messages, like it it just. Does not does not have the Olympiacos thing. I, I don't know if yeah. you say that, but he's not an Olympiacos striker. Like it's yeah, and I think it wasn't a, a, a mistake to let Tikino leave for that because yeah, both uh, Wijo and Camara they don't come close to Tikino's level, even especially in Europe. Because I remember the first game in Haifa, I think Tikino was a starter, and he had like. Few he hit the to... post, remember? In the... yeah, 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 yeah. And he, he, he was so powerful when it came to like play alone in the middle of like four or five defender because he just won fools and stuff like that. And like the yeah. difference when I saw Wijo tonight, like Wijo, he, he just can't do almost anything. He can't dribble. He can't hold the ball. He can't win uh, headers. Yeah. He's I think the, his main quality when he came was like he, he could shoot from outside the box. And he's I, I, I shot. didn't. And he's good I with left and right foot. I think that I was... didn't see him do that since in, since he's there. Like the only good thing he did was the assist for Pep Biel against uh, against Ionicos. Yeah. And I think we were in the uh, building, of course. We were yeah, there. And, uh, Camara, Camara's second half gives me more optimist, optimist, optimism uh, yeah. for, for the future. Uh, for Kamara, Razan, that's for Wijo because no, okay, Wijo is not 
you, you can see it does not want to be there. Like it didn't want to come at first. And I'm pretty sure he's not going to settle in Olympiacos for many reasons because the team is not prepared. The team is not ready. Uh, too many players on the squad. Uh, probably he doesn't like per the, the way the, the, the football works in Greece. And he's probably right about that. But <laughs> it, 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 the it, moment it, he missed that tap in versus Yonikos, you were like, oh, shit, this could go so bad yeah. with this guy. You know what I mean? It was exactly. Like, yeah, because, you need that goal. You need that first goal, especially in the Greek league, and it like sets you off so many times. Also, one one I want to say is that uh, compared to El Arabi and Bakambu, both of them like they were exposed to a very high pressure, like to make it out from French club. Uh, to I, I I don't know what to say that like I, I don't know if yeah the it, pressure at OM or Villarreal yeah but or, I, I mean in the younger per, period like yeah when when El Arabi career. started he like he, he scored like ten goals with Caen in League One when he was very young and Bakambu like they had to fight so hard to 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 have a career from France and I think it gave them like extra uh, motivation or at least like extra hunger I don't know how to say that if it's something that you can't yeah. understand but and Bakambu had to go to Turkey when he was young too as yeah, well yeah yeah play. yeah exactly yeah. and compared to Wijo because Wijo the biggest club he plays he played in was Bordeaux which is a massive club but the the, the year he played in Bordeaux the it club was, was in year. a very bad situation so yeah. like it he didn't really play it at a level that could uh, make a thing that he could make it on Olympiacos and we kind of see this on the pitch because but you, you don't even he, look at his goal numbers. He played almost 95 games for Bordeaux and scored almost 30 goals. Yeah. So let's say you go compare that to Cedric Bakambu, who played like 70 goals in China and or 70 yeah. games in China, scored like 55 goals or something. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's just this idea. Like at Olympiacos, you need to be a almost like a quantity scorer. You need to be able yeah. to score often. Like that's why coming from China or a place where you've scored a lot or El Arabi did like, you just need someone who knows how to score, you know, at all. Exactly. It's like taking a risk on someone who is a good striker abroad, they're physical, but they played for a mid lower table team. So they didn't score as much is risky because they're not used <laughs> to, they're not used yeah. to in front of goals to getting exactly. being the killer or having the opportunity. I don't know if that I, makes sense. Like no, it this makes profile sense. of striker really, really is good for us the one that like knows how to score goals and scored goals maybe in shittier leagues like exactly that's a profile that's and, good for all the Belkos. and i uh i i know that sometimes i'm very harsh uh towards players that come from france uh and that are linked with olympiacos but like for example amavi from marseille because i knew he was going to be a trash player and he just played <laughs> He just played eight minutes from, from Retafe until now. But the two players that I knew would make it at Olympiacos, the first one was Envila because I knew Envila was a very high-class player. Like he, he was just playing in the wrong team in France. And Bakambu, like Bakambu is the kind of guy that once he made a 13 goals Europa League campaign with Villarreal. Like, since when we had the players in Olympiacos uh, that uh, had this kind of number in Europe, like 13 Europa League goals in one season. I think it's, it's it says it all. And I I'm, I was sure he would score goals in Greece because even the first game he, he, against Atromitos, I think he wasn't really r ready like at 100%. Wasn't even like, he, could yeah, have, he, he, he could have scored he could have scored like five goals almost because yeah. he got so many situations. And I think the Europa League campaign would have been so, so much different. So, so much and different. And also, there's these players, this is a weird comment, but there's players, you know, who know the standard when they come to Greece or like when you sign players like Paolo or Conrad de la Fuente who trained in England or in the Academy of Marseille or Academy of Barcelona for de la Fuente, and then they come to the reality of Greece and then they go to Ofi Crete. Like players who've gone to Turkey and been successful or gone abroad to shitty places and been shitty places is harsh, but like shittier leagues and been successful and done well in the conditions can sometimes be good. Or even players who come from second division teams like Cisse or Madi Kamara, sometimes when the players come from organized, clean facilities, 
organized pitches, they're not as good. Like even Mathieu Valbuena started in lower levels in France. Like you want these players who've played like in the shit pitch, like in the terrible pitch and turned their career around and like made it, you know, or the player who's experienced life in like some foreign country that sucks big time. Like sometimes that to me is, and and someone says like Onyekuru. Yeah. Sometimes it goes really wrong, but like the players, right. like bow, like bowler, like the English players, never fucking work for Olympiacos. Like Premier League players, they come to Greece and they're just like, "There's no organization here. Like, what is this? Blah blah blah. Life is hard. It's not like," and and they fail. Like De La Fuente, an American guy from Barcelona, is going to come to Olympiacos and succeed. Like, who are you guys? Who are you kidding? Like, no. sometimes you want those like players who've just been through shit. Like they've been beat down and they like because that's the reality in greece it's like the least organized shittiest league shitty pitches like yeah yeah, you, yeah. You, kinda... you want those fighters you know you want those fighters yeah, I, I don't that, know that that, that's why I, that's why uh that's what i wanted to say speaking about uh bakambu and al arabi like young period because to make it out of french club like you have so many players around uh i think it's one of one of the best countries in europe to produce players so like so many competition everywhere and i it's not a surprise to see valbuena being as good as he is right now at 38 years old because he had to fight so so much to get there like to make his way out of professional football and i think this is what what misses in olympiacos and even players like holebas for example yeah uh, he had the, like these. Uh, I don't know what is it exactly, but he, he, he would not. He, he, he did not allow himself to be bad, or at least to look bad, uh, to be resigned, to to just appear like he doesn't care about the team and stuff like that. And it's I, it's like players who appreciate the club almost as well. Yeah. Like I know they've gone bad now, but Usain Uba, Pap Sisse, Mari Kamara. Like they appreciated the opportunity and like they saw Olympiacos at the highest light. Yeah. Like um, they, they should have bought, got moved on at some point. But it's the same with academy players too. Like Doi comes through and he see like Doi has been to the shitty pitches of like, I don't know, Kefalonia or like Carpenisi or like shitty places in Greece, you know, not shitty, but like shitty football places in Greece and like played there. So yeah. when he goes, when Doi goes to like fucking Levadiakos for like away game, it's like, what the fuck? They don't even have lockers here. There's no warm water. Like, what is this shit? You know, like sometimes stuff like that is a big shock sometimes to players, you know. Um, I, I It's just like sometimes it's it, you, we bring in these prima donna sometimes it feels and it's just like they, they show up and then they go to Ophi Crete and they're like, oh, I'm above this, like what the fuck is this shit? Like this field is shit. Like look at this little village we're playing in. And it's like for fuck's sake. And then you have Bakambu who goes like, oh shit, I can go here and score like five goals. This is fun. Like there's like the levels to this shit. It's like there's, <laughs> I don't know. No, what, but what I, I, I kind of agree because I think what Hendoy, Hendoy showed tonight is that since Martins came, we wasted so many opportunities to give minutes like very good amounts of minutes to this kind of players. Uh, yeah. It could have been Apostolopoulos. It could have it, 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 it could have been Calogeros, Calogeropoulos more often. Could have been like, uh, I don't know, every player from the B team, like Costi, the Cyprus midfielder, which is a very good midfielder, by the way. It could have been Pinakas, could have been Voilis, could have been... Uh, so many like Liazos. careers destroyed. It could have been Not even careers Oblis. destroyed, but just like... Oh, so many names you hear so many names and you're like how many doys could have been like at yeah. how many doys could have been playing like he, instead of fucking conrad de la fuente you could have had like someone play like yeah. jesus christ like you waste your money and time on like de la fuente and josh bowler like josh bowler just wants to go back to nottingham forest like who gives a shit about this guy? Like his long hair, like seriously, just like, he doesn't no, want to but... be here. Like he's just here for like, Oh mate, I get like a few minutes running around the pitch. Great. It's like, seriously, like what a waste of time. We Joe as well. Like yeah. 
it, why are we signing loan players like for we, we had Kuipers, man? Like, we had Kuipers. We had, we had Kuipers. Like that's I, I the profile think... you want. Like player who wants to be here. Like Kuipers was a grind, like a fighter. Like he was a warrior, and he loved Olympiacos. And Olympiacos was like, sorry, I, I, mate. Know what? Fuck off. I'm, I'm, like, I'm going. What? I'm going to be. I'm going to go further than this because the sometimes like I I've said it on the last pod on the last pod, but a player like. Arangelovic, if you take it, take him uh, uh, comparison against uh, from uh, no, against uh, Arangelovic compared to uh, Bowler compared to De La, De La Fuente, he knows what Olympiacos means. Like, okay, yeah. he pisses us off like so many times. But he scored goals. Like, yeah. Rangelovic won the game versus Pasiani. Now he scored a goal, remember? We were there as well. Like, the, he the, scores the, goals like uh, he may be shit, but no, it, <laughs> it's, the, at the end of it, I, I, I kind of agree with the first, the comments we had earlier, like saying we can't be optimistic, and I kind of agree because Hendoy won't solve this problem by himself. Like we we all know, and Doi like in may January, turn into we, Doi, we could, like Doi can t- like this is the problem. Like people are like, oh, Doi played amazing. Now he's going to be this. And Doi needs to become fucking Costas Manolas 2.0 for Olympiacos. Like, Doi can turn into Manthatis, and it was good what happened tonight. Like, Doi could become, like, a shit player, but, like, we found out. Like, we we gave him the chance, and we found out. Like, Doi got the, got the chance and became Manthatis. That is fine. Like, with Josh Bowler, we know what he is. <laughs> it's a waste of time. Pinakas could come, and he could be, like, Hassan 2.0 or something. But, like... You, yeah, you uh, give people the chance because one of them could be Panos Retos 2.0 and you sell them for 20 million euros. Like, that's how yeah. it goes. Like, not all of these guys are going to yeah. make it. Like, and uh, Versailles or Andruzos, they can turn into that, you know, but it's fine. The question is, which legacy was the best for Olympiacos? Was it Paolo Bento's legacy by playing Retos, by playing Nicolau, by playing Andruzos, by playing Mantatis? Or was it like Martin's? legacy uh four years of winning trophies and the the day he left like there is no nothing that can make olympiacos remain at the level he, he created so i think it means that what he did wasn't really sustainable because it did not involve uh, enough academy players like to maintain some kind of level of performance and that's why i still kind of love paulo bento even if he was Kind of a tragic coach, Olympiacos, but he like just look at the the lineup he, he put against Aruca, like the game we had to win to be in the Europa League because we went out of the Champions League. No one will do that again, Olympiacos. Even Mitchell could come close to that, but uh, look, remember Mitchell? He he gave he almost gave a career to Vergos, for example. Yeah, that's he gave I mean. a career to to Leighton before Leighton got his. Uh, but it's hard uh, hurt injury. Yeah. He, he, yeah. No, it's I'm, true. I'm sure he gave career to Kolebas too. Remember, he uh, yeah. Gaitan Bong, I think, came in to play left back for Olympiacos back then, and Michel. This is what we want to see. I think Kolebas, Michel, like... Michel can can win some some time from himself by playing yeah. those kind of player. Because even if we ended up being fa- being fourth on the league. The only way it could be good for the club is being fourth by playing Endoy, by playing B-team players, by playing Solakis, by playing these kind of profiles compared to but playing Wijo and playing Vinny Third. Doi playing, man, that's the thing I get. It's like, why are we so scared? Like, was Doi so much better than, or so much worse than what we've seen all season from, like, even Costas Manolas? Like, not no. really. Like, well. So, but Michel understands that. Like, he understands where he is in Greece. Like, you put some very talented players like Pep Biel, Bakambu, and Socrates, Versalco, whatever. And then you put Doi. And then you put, I don't know who the other youngster he may use. And it works fine. Like, it's no big yeah. deal. It's not a problem. Like, yeah. these players can just be like, oh, do this. And if it's really shit, they can take them off. But, like, when you're playing, like, fucking Ofi Kreet who sucks big time. Like they can barely score a goal. Like you, it, it's okay. Like you can use a 20 yeah. year old player. Like it's not like Martins thinks like, 
oh shit, if I don't use Cafu against Atromitos at home, I'm going to lose. Like, it's okay to use a young player. And like, Michel kind of understands that. He's like, well, if I put some really talented players with young players in Greece, <laughs> I probably won't lose. And the young players will probably want to start a career. So they'll play pretty well. Yeah. Like, and, it's. Uh, Incredible how he's the only one who seemingly understands this. Like it's you, you kind of say it all because remember Martins the way he used young players uh, was when he, for example, uh, uh, filled. I remember this game in Levadiakos. We ended up losing this game. I think it was yes, the cup game. He it would just like be a cup game came and then he's like, I'm putting all eleven young players. It's like you yeah, don't fucking exactly. do that, you idiot. Exactly. Like, and I think Mitchell. The only, the only area in which I would say Mitchell is a better coach than Martins is about using academy players in Olympiacos, like how to make them uh, improve and how to give, to give them confidence because we are the best team on this league. We have the best players. So the, the context, like you, you, can't, you can't find a club in Europe with a better context than this to yeah. like use young players like, Even Paris Saint-Germain, the league is way dip, more difficult in France to use young players, and they they still they still hit the best team on on the on the league. But yeah. when you play against Levadiakos at home, you 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 have you have to feel like two or three academy players. It it should be mandatory. Like yeah. if the coach, it should be mandatory because yeah. like the board should honestly make it mandatory because it's like. Like, even if they turn into Manfatis or they turn into Andruto, so they turn into whatever, it's just like, okay. But you're like, okay, they weren't the level. But then you can still sell them as well. Like, a Dutch team will pay for 22 year old player like a million euros, a million and a half euros. You know what I mean? Or even Nicolau, like, was a failure <laughs> at Olympiacos. He sold for like four million euros, like, has a fantastic career. Like, How many Nicolaos now play for fucking Ergotelis or something because like Olympiacos never gave them the opportunity? I think about that stuff sometimes because Peter Filipakos, yeah. when he was on our podcast, was like, there were so many good young players in the academy. And I used to think like, oh, this kid's going abroad. He's going to be amazing. Then he would like look at their Wikipedia 15 years later and was like, oh, wow, like the best team they ever played for was like Doxa Drama. It's like, what the fuck happened to these people? You know what I mean? It's the same story. Yeah. It's funny because when we were together at the Lefkada Cup Games this summer, there, there was a, a kid that went through Olympiacos Academy and he ended up playing for Lefkada. Like, it's just the way yeah. we destroy player. And and he, was he the good one? Was he the talented one? Who was yeah, the really I, good one for Lefkada's team? Yeah, God, I, forget. I don't remember quite... the name, but... Yeah. What was the name of the team again? <laughs> like Tilikratis or something? Yeah, yeah Tilikratis. Fucking amazing team. Huge stadium, <laughs> sold out, baby. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> But I think to, 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 to get back on track, uh, yeah. the question that needs to be answered tonight is uh, who will play between Pah Pahalakis or Solakis against Pauk? Uh, I would start Pascal Lakis probably. I don't know. Um, It's difficult because I Pascal say, Lakis is like so. Uh, I can just like think he sometimes. He for like, those games. Like he leaves. He's, he's physical. He's athletic. But then he did the thing where he almost like pulled the guy's face back. You know, he missed the ball. He tried to go over and then he pulled his face back. And I was like, oh my god, is he about to give a stupid penalty? It's like, man, you're six seven. You don't need to like pull people and like grab their face. And, do you remember what I mean? Like it was near the end of the game. I think like. The ball was going over. It was like a dink into yeah, the yeah, ball. Yeah. And he went over and the ball was too low. And he just grabbed the guy's face and then he picked up the ball. And it was like the guy like had no idea. He was like, did he just grab my face? And like, what, what happened? So I, I would. But then Zolakis so say... is like a 19 year old child who you're like, you get you. I'm anxious just watching him play football. Like I'm just like he, he shows the anxiety so much. Like, so Latis is the one exception here where I'm just like, goalkeeper is a specific <laughs> position where I don't think, mm -hmm. like, you can play games with an academy player in big no, games. Like, you can play the, Zolakis with Levadiakos, whatever, but, like, in big games, yeah. I don't think so. That's just my opinion. But Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you because the, the worst thing with Zolakis is that we, 
and I personally want him to success so much. Like yeah. I'm getting nervous. I'm getting scared that he, he, mm -hmm. he could make a mistake. Like I don't, I just don't want him to make a terrible mistake in yeah. a game against Paul because because I in need, the B I team, know. in the B team, he make he makes sometimes big mistakes. Like you and I yeah. both have watched B team games. Like yeah, it's it's, it's normal because it's part of the of the. He's the, 19. The, yeah. Yeah. I, the issue the issue is that it should have been lowered anyway because we shouldn't have to be asking also this kind of question. Like the the debate should be. Who who gonna play between Pashalakis and Kristinsson? And the answer is really quick to find is will be Pashalakis. Yeah. And I think right now Pashalakis has to play against Pauk. Like. Yeah. And yeah, and I kind of agree the context for Salakis to play right now is not the best. Like we don't really know the defense. Mm -hmm. We don't really know who's gonna be the right back. Uh, and also Pashalakis. Yeah. Um, I, as I said when you were talking, like he leaves for these kind of games. Yeah. I, and I, and Phil said it. He was in the stadium. Yeah, he says was at the home game. And this is what I felt when I watch Tolakis. I haven't seen him play in the stadium, but it's what I feel like when I watch the game. He said was at the home game with Karabag, and the tension was palpable in the crowd every time Tolakis was on the ball. The early air didn't help, but yeah, I wouldn't throw him in again <laughs> against Pau. Yeah, it's the thing. Like you can feel it in the crowd. Like he, in a goalkeeper, you can like feel that swagger. Like you know, like they do. We like Pascal like he's, for example, like does weird shit. Like he bounces the ball and he's like got his chest up and he's just like a fuck. Like he's like the Greek word like magas. You know, he's like he's tough. Like I'm a tough guy. Like blah blah blah. I'm confident. When sometimes he does crazy shit, but okay, like the other team doesn't know he's insane. Maybe they do a scout report, maybe. But like he emits <laughs> this confidence to the back line, to himself, to everyone. Like everything's under control. I'm the boss. Like nothing. I'm not worried. You know. So Lex is like 19 year old child. Like he gets the ball and he like scurries away and he like throws it. Like it, you can, you know what I mean? Like you feel how nervous he's like. Get the get this ball away from me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know yeah, if that yeah, makes yeah. sense. You can feel no, it, it, it makes like... sense because I I remember uh, uh, last summer when uh, I think it was last summer when he had when he had to play because Vaklik wasn't ready. Yeah, and of course he wasn't. Like, no one's ever ready. Like even a goalkeeper signs for Olympiacos and they're like, oh, he's not ready. Like how is a goalkeeper not ready? Like how <laughs> anyway? <laughs> and if we if you look back at those game, I think it was against Ludogorets. Like yeah. you, you know that with Vaklik, we we would have gone through those games because yes, we so would have gone through. Wasn't, it's wasn't my bad, take, but yeah. as people say on the comments, like it's not showing the confidence defenders are expecting from the goalkeeper. Exactly, and especially at this very moment when Olympiacos can't in shambles. not afford to lose uh, any more points uh, until the break, and. Yeah, Pasha Lakis, he came ready. He's ready. The game he made today, he didn't consider goal, so it's good for the confidence. And he knows Pauk more than everyone else in this team. And Pauk, right now, especially, has some really uh, big problems They're on the team. So, now. like, we shouldn't be afraid to play Pasha Lakis against Pauk. I yeah. think it's, it's not even a debate. And it does not mean we're going to burn Solakis because with Vaklik being injured, Mitchell, he can't play Tsolakis uh, on all the games in the yeah. cup. And if Tsolakis if Solakis make, makes uh, 10 or 15, 15 games in the season, it would have been it would be already a good uh, a good aim on for him. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Overall, we'll see. Honestly, this conversation has been like everything and anything about the game. I feel like, <laughs> like, do we talk about the game? This just happens. Like, you guys don't know, but Martial and I are very good friends, and like sometimes we'll just talk about shit like this randomly about old Bacos, about football in Greece, about other things. So, this is like normal conversation on the phone. I, I don't Marcial think there is much to say about this game. Or yeah, there's nothing because... much to say about the game. We got one point. The team's in shambles. This is good for confidence. We it, it's like the title I put up here. Olympiacos yeah. hold for nil nil draw. But just just look how happy it makes us to see a players like Endoy playing. Like exactly, it is a night like we will remember this night because I think 
as a football fans, we kind of dream for that, like seeing young players popping on the team, like delivering a good performance. And like I, I won't say it matters more more than the result because we play for points, especially at Olympiakos. But yeah, this is but the kind of like... things we that make us happy, uh, that make us yeah. forget all the shit we've been through this summer. Yeah, like and. Imagine if Endoy keeps playing against Park and we won we win this game like the 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 the, the, the savor of it like is yeah this is what we want to see at Olympiakos and if Mitchell yeah. uh, can do that that I, I think even with being Thegan as much as the deception it would be for Olympiakos if we see like three four players from the academy playing like. We, we could see it's like some kind of project coming from yeah. this. But it's like there is many times to this and the focus yeah. needs to be on Monday. And also the, the thing is we're playing two seasons right now. We're playing one season in Europe and we're playing one season in Greece. We have completely different players we use in Greece versus what we use in Europe. So it's kind of like, um, not completely, but you guys get what I mean. Like... Um, <coughs> That, like that's how it goes you know the the game with Pauk is completely different because I'll expect James Rodriguez to play Bakambu to play um Conrad de la Fuente no I'm just joking uh, <laughs> um but but you have more players that can come in um yeah yeah and also I just want to reply to concept Calcio saying this one yeah uh I'm, I'm, um, as a French guy, I, I watch a lot of French football, of course, and I, I don't see how not could like grab even a point in the situation they are right now. Like they are struggling for relegation in France. They have like 15 players to play uh, League One and the Europa League, and it means that at some point they will have to make choices because they, I think they. Lost pretty much every games, uh, every game apart. Except for us. Yeah, except for us, and they just cons- the, the out of the last last six games, they just scored one goal, and it was a, another goal from Monaco. So mm. I, I don't see not winning against Karabag. Maybe a draw, but I think Karabag is able to come at, in not and win. The the the, the only thing I want is us to be in a position to be third uh, at the kickoff against Nantes because yeah. if we play if we play as protagonist of this game like not the first one in, in Nantes but if we keep if we play from the first minute to the last like there's no way we we just can't score against Nantes which is probably and maybe El Arabi is back difference. by then you know yeah. there's a little bit of El Arabi magic you know and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bing, yeah. bing, and we're out of there. That's. Imagine, like, you win the first game. It, it, it could be like our UCL campaign when, when we beat Marseille in the first game and we were trash the, the, la- the last five games of the group. Because... Exactly. And not it is in this situation right now. And if they come to Pierreus without any, any win, uh, I'm, I'm pretty they sure could just we... give up, you know. They have bigger fish, as they exactly. say in English, bigger fish to fry. They have bigger. They could get relegated. Four teams get relegated this season in Ligue 1. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and they, they, they don't. They, they probably want to avoid to be to have a a, a a gap too big in the league to 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 cover after Europe. So yeah, I, and, and I'll, of I don't want. I don't think they want to be third of this group. Like it would be like uh, poisonous gifts for them. Yeah, to be third, but uh, and honestly, like for Olympiacos now, the goal is keep the minus seven around minus seven, and somehow try to make it to the Conference League, and then we have a second preseason during the World Cup, right? Those are the goals um, at the club <laughs> at the moment, and today was a step towards that. Like that's why some people are criticizing. I think Costa made the title of like, is this the turning point? Is that what the name of the video was? Like, it's really more a turning point in Europe. Like, can this get us to the Conference League? Because also for Greek football, Greek football needs Olympiakos to get to the Conference League because I think we're now in the 22nd coefficient spot. 
like that's an absolute disaster for Greek football. So it's asking, yeah, yeah. That, that that's the turning point really. But anyway, um, on that note, I know it's getting late there and in, in mother France, uh, my third country, I love France, as we all know. We Joe we, we, Huang is not the only person who travels to Bordeaux. I also go to Bordeaux. I also go to Paris. So, yes, I, I love I, France. I think we forgot to say who's the MVP of the game tonight. Ah, oh, shit. Yes. I, you, like, you see the difference. One Man of the match and coach's grade. Here it is. Martial, who's your man of the match? It's, it's hard to say. I, I have to it's say, Socrates. and Doi. It's Socrates yeah, for yeah, me, it's Socrates, but Doi you're right. could be as well. No, it's Socrates. Yeah. You're, you're right. Totally right. Socrates. And um, coach is great. It's uh, with letters or with a uh, grade? Number. What do you do? One through ten in France? I think it. I would give him seven out of ten because <laughs> <laughs> the goat with the comments. France loves lovers too. Uh, I would say. I would say. I think seven is kind of too 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 good grade for Mitchell, but six That's out of ten because he took a risk uh, with Endoy, uh, and also with he, was it six he, out of fifteen or six out of ten? No, six out of ten. Because Nolan says they do one through fifteen. Uh, no, it, no. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but <it> six <laughs> six out of ten because <laughs> because he made good subs too. Okay, I would say I wouldn't have started. Uh, either I would have only gone with either Wijo or either Abu Bakar Kamara. I thought that was a mistake. One. Um, other than that, I think the lineup writes itself and also the subs. I thought it was super risky what he did with Marcelo, but the lineup was more. Marcelo, the first game, came in and played almost like in a 5-3-2 or like as a wing. It was odd. Tonight, it was a clear 4-4-2. Oleg was behind him. The roles were clear. So I thought that was okay. So I'll give him a six, six out of ten. But for our American <laughs> audience, I'll give him a C, a C out of yeah. eight plus. Yeah. But the 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 question uh, from uh, look at my eyes. Do when you do see... you think Rayab will be benched? He says. This is the question I ask myself: like, how long Marcelo will keep coming in, coming in as a winger? Like, no. What, what, Marcelo what? cannot play fullback. Like he physically cannot. Like you look yeah, at him and you're like, if if Mitchell use him uses him as a winger, like it just it it it, it reminds me like when you play with uh, your friends and a top players like the the best players from your friends come comes and play with you. Like he play he could play as a striker as a goalkeeper. Like it just does not does not work. Marcelo is a, a fullback, so it just needs to be to be a fullback. Just bench Oleg for one game to see how it turns. Who who is gonna bench Oleg? Like the question we have since uh, Oleg came, because th th let's not forget uh, Oleg came in January of 2021 and is close to uh, 100 games with Olympiacos. How is that possible? <laughs> I think I, I'm pretty like, sure the if, world if has changed. COVID nineteen, Russia invades Ukraine. Panathinaikos now in first place, and Rayabchuk is still our left back. Like I think that makes sense too. It's like how many replacements were brought for Rayabchuk, and it's like never worked. Yeah. Leidner, Marcelo, am I Vinagre? No, Vinagre. Vinagre. No, it like, was before. I think it, it was before. was before, but like, like Jesus Christ. Oh, no, and then we did Project Kitsos or whatever it was. I don't know. I don't know. And also with Leidner, um, we can't say. So <laughs> there will be an update after the game with Pauk, I think, or for the game with Pauk. Mm. I'll just leave it at that. Can't say. 
can't go on the record and say, but there should be an update this weekend. Yeah, but we can't say right now. But we have information that it should have an update by this weekend. But I also think, also I have good information, I'm allowed to say this, that Corberan did not like Leidner. Leidner was ready to play under Corberan, but Corberan didn't like him. So that's something that you won't read in Greek media that I can tell all of you right now, and that's okay. Karbovnik, too. I forgot about him. Yes, he had a terrible haircut. Yeah, he looked terrible. What is also happening with Fortunis? Finished, I think. Finished player in my book. I don't know. Like, there's, I think he's finished. Marcial? Uh, I don't know what to reply to this because I think... I think it's kind of bad from, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say it's from the club, but somehow uh, expectation were created. Uh, for, uh, and like, there is no way for Tunis can fulfill, fulfill this expectation right now. Like, he's not coming back to the lineup. He's not coming back to be the Fortunis he was before his injuries, like... Uh, hitting double-double every season in Super League and stuff like that. It's just not possible, I think. I, I, I just don't know in which uh, condition he is right now, but he's just, he, he can't uh, go over James. He can't, he can't go over Pep Biel. He can't even go over Valbuena. Yeah. yeah. That's... He, the, he got the, like three assists. Yeah, Nolan is right here. He got like three assists for like Olympiacos B or something. I remember like Kotsis like drafted up like a tasty little propaganda article for that. Like Fortunis is back, baby. Like <laughs> it's like Fortunis is not ready. Like he tore his ACL. What like over a year now again? Like no, I, how, I when, it, when did he tear the ACL again? Uh, not this summer, and the last, the, the summer before. Yeah, it's been over a year, man. Like what? No, I, I think it's. Yeah. Like, why did they tell us he's ready to get in the team? I have no idea, honestly. Like, because he probably should be. Like, after a year, you should be able to play football. Like, to be honest, like a cruciate ligament injury is bad, <laughs> but if you're properly rehabbed, you're allowed to train. You're brought into the team. It should take you six, seven months. Like. I think that's right, right? Six, seven months for a knee injury a lot of times. Like, it's not like – it's been 16 months. Like, the there's something more going on. I I have no idea what they're going to do with him. Maybe he plays for Spauk. Doubt it. But anyway. Also, regarding Leidner, um, good or bad news? I, I don't know. There's just going to be news. Like, there's going to be news. That's all I can say. Like, um, But I also, another set of news. I also don't think Michel rates him. That's a hot take from me. Let's see. Let's see. Um, don't forget Scarpa. He signed a contract with Olympiacos. He didn't even know it. Uh, yeah. We'll see. And on that note, everyone, Olympiacos plays again Monday night with Pauk. Guys. With Pauk. With Pauk, with Pauk, with Pauk. So, I think the the the, the uh, uh, come on, yeah. a point we're forgetting tonight is, I think Mitchell really likes Agibu. And yeah, that's when, a good point. When I saw the game tonight, like I I still can't understand why we sidelined Agibu like that just for Kunde. Like it's not just possible. And yeah. because we, I think we probably see him playing at Spark. And, and yeah. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder watching the game tonight, uh, I wonder because if we make it to the conference league, like we have three changes to make. And one spot is for Bakambu, the second spot is for Rames, oh, and the third, the third spot, like, I think it will go to Agibu if it's still, still there. What a disaster! Like on it, but like almost you need a central defender, I think, because yeah, tr yeah, true. Yeah, it's a disaster. Also, who Hussein, you asked uh, about Envia. Um, we can tell you, um, Jan Envia is not okay. He's got bad pain in the ankle. Um, is what <coughs> I'm being told, um, I can say he's got tomorrow. They're going to run tests in Athens, but doesn't look good for Pauk. He's mm -hmm. he's his ankle's pretty swollen. He's in trouble. Uh, Coach Sack, two major surgeries and a bad attitude. It's over. Yeah, maybe so. 
um, guys, this can go on and on. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to let it run. It's already late. Martial needs to rest. And I'll just end it on this question. Is Martial a fraud? In my book, yes. Anyway. So I, I, I just want to answer to, to a last question uh, from Manos. Uh, yes, Marcel I, I is a fraud. We, yeah. Oh, diff, Manos question. Sorry. I yes. think we we can, no the the the, the one. one yeah this yeah. one, and I think we can win the league, the championship because we have more quality in the squad and we have bunch of players that knows how to win titles because uh, let's not forget that uh, I won't talk about penalties because I'm not the kind of guy that talks about penalties. Uh, There's no from... need to talk about penalties. Like no, but honestly. what I want to say is that Aitor uh, has scored uh, eight goals out of 12 from Panathinaikos and also uh, Aitor uh, is running out of contract in June and we know that this kind of player that they will re receive like massive offers from abroad or from elsewhere, and like they're probably go mad about that. And I don't see uh, Panathinaikos as sustainable as they should, that like as they appear right now, winning seven games out of seven. And I think Ike right now is much more than a threat uh, for Olympiakos uh, yeah. because they have a much more balanced team and. I think Ike about has, a coach. Ike has the stadium, stadium, man. Like the yeah, stadium true, yeah. is. Did you see the stadium? Like, it looks yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Like the atmosphere. It's going to be really difficult to beat them. Like every game is a fiesta there. Like, yeah. And I don't also see they, them dropping they have a, points. They have the better striker, in my opinion, uh, apart from Bakambu, which is Aro, Araujo, yeah. because Panathinaikos, they don't really have a, a striker that can win you a league. Um, this year, mm -hmm. the the they think I'm hanging on it because I think I think uh, I, I I still believe sorry that we can win this title, but we need to be at five point max in at the break. Yeah, we just need to get to the break and have it be manageable. The game, I think, what is it, November sixth? With no November sixth, correct? Like with Panathinaikos in Leoforos is like the game of like the first half of the season. Like if Olympiacos, let's say, can pick up a few points and then beat Panathinaikos in Leoforos before the break, it would be massive for the the season. At this point, I really I really don't like want to talk about penalties or Panathinaikos. I think they have a decent team, a decent coach. They put it together. But I do think that they're lacking maybe a few pieces for it to go long term. I think those 1-0 wins with uh, Asteras Tripoli at home, kind of, they, um, historically for Panathinaikos the past few years, they kind of, they falter a bit. Like those games, the close games was like, let's say, Pasianina away. Like that's been a big, difficult game for Panathinaikos these past few years. Like once I see them winning those <laughs> games, I'll be a bit more concerned also. But like they did go win a few derbies. So I don't know. I don't know. Like maybe they're quite good, but, Olympiacos just needs to put it together and then we'll see. But yeah. No, they, they, they are definitely good, but they, they, don't seem, they don't seem as good or as solid as the Pauk of Luchescu was when yeah. they won like the Pauk title. Like Pauk of like... Luchescu, you were like, they're not going to lose. Like, you know, Pauk of Luchescu, remember, like when they went undefeated that season, the first year of Martins, you're like, fuck, these guys don't lose, you know? They're, they don't feel like that. No, I, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Yeah. They seem more fragile. But yeah. Anyway, guys, we'll wrap up on that note. One last call. Make sure to like and subscribe to this episode. It gets it means a lot to us. It costs you nothing. Giving a big old thumbs up, as Costa <laughs> says, <laughs> brings other people to the episode and grows our channel. And make sure if you ever need to ship your home, ship with Piraeus International because they will ship all of your things to your new home. And if you like to gamble, please use the code GATE7INTL at betus.com.pa because you can make a lot more money if you use our code. And it also helps us out quite a bit. So on that note, everyone, I will leave you with that. Um, 
have a great night. Almost the great thing about these games is tomorrow is Friday. You know, Friday, the weekend is coming. Uh, bon weekend, as they say in my village. Bon weekend. Uh, yeah, I'm so, working this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, on that note, talk to everyone soon. Bye-bye. Ciao. Have a great bye -bye. night. Bon oui, bonsoir, as they say. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, pour pas, ça suit, pas me